get into our worship. Welcome to Worthy Wednesday, amen. I'm Elder Paulette Davidson with Harvesting Ministries, amen. I'm going to play a different song for you this morning. Morning, Shirley. And I just want us to have a little intro of praise and worship, and then we're going to get into it. Oldie but a good, amen. So it's just saying, God Almighty. play another song that's an oldie but a goodie, amen? Sometimes we need to remember that God has a secret place for us, amen? A place where he can hide us, a place where we can go, a place where it's just for you and God. Can no one come in, can no one go out, amen? But it's just you and God in that secret place. So I want to play that by Karen Clark Shear this morning, a secret place, amen? Hopefully it'll bless you. As a touch of 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. There is a secret place, amen, that God has for you and me. Amen. How many know I've been there? I don't know about you, but there have been moments and times. Amen. I had to go in the throne. Amen. Who would ask God to hide me? In the midst of my tears, in the midst of my pain. Woo, Jesus. I said, please hide me. Hey, come on now. In your tabernacle. Amen. Amen. Let us go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and then we'll get into our word on this morning. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we give you thanks and we give you praise, Father. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you for hiding us in your tabernacle. We thank you, Father, for getting us through those moments or those issues or the situations that we did not know how we got in or we were not able to get out or we were not able to see the light. We thank you for being the light. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you, Father, for being our provider on this morning. Father, we thank you for giving us not just the abundance that we need, but the overflow. Father, that you continue to bless us on each and every day. Sometimes we feel down, Father, and sometimes we cannot see a way out of no way, Father, but you continue to bless us. You continue to drop nuggets of wisdom, Father, and mercy on us. You continue to be with us, Father, even in the midst of our mess and our transgressions. So we give you thanks and we give you praise on this morning, Father, for you're worthy to be praised, Father. So we ask on this morning, Father, touch us in a way that only you can touch us, Father. Reach us, Father, on the inside. Reach us in the depths, Father, of the roots that we are going through in our wounds or in our souls, Father. Reach us, Father, where we need to be able to feel your presence like never before. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, wherever we might be or wherever we might go on through, Father, touch us. Open our hearts, open our minds, and open our ears to hear the word that we have for you on this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. For God is good. Amen. And he's good all the time. Amen. Again, beloved, I want to say good morning to everyone. If you pop on in and you pop on through, make sure you drop a good morning. Amen. So that way I know that you're here. Amen. Again, welcome with me again on Worthy Wednesdays. I am Elder Paulette Davidson. Amen. And this is my ministry, Harvesting Ministries. I come to you every Wednesday and every Saturday for our summer hours. Amen. Just to give you a snippet of whatever God has placed on my heart that hopefully it will touch you the same way it touched me, amen. It's all about encouraging each other. We gotta pray together, we gotta stick together, amen. We gotta have unity in this season, amen. I don't know about y'all, but we've been going through some things, amen. So now we need each other, amen. Not just God, but we also need each other to survive, amen. So we're just trying to connect you together on this morning, amen, for Worthy Wednesday. And I have a story that I want to read called the nails in the fence and once I read the story then we're going to you know dissect the story we're going to talk about it so I want you to really you know open up your ears this morning and you really use your imagination you know how kids did back in the day amen we were all children <laughs> amen some way back in the day let us use our imagination and let us really get into what I, I, I'm trying to unveil in this story amen because even though we see the simple thing, sometimes there's always a more message or a meaning behind what we see, amen? So this is why I wanted to use the story first before we get, you know, into the depth of the sermon. And then, of course, I'm going to bring some scripture, amen? But I really want you to hear the story that I have this morning. And then, again, if you would like, I can post it on my page or I can also email you or DM you as well. But I, I, I pray that it touches you the way it touched me, amen? So it's called The Nails in the Fence, amen. There once was a little boy who had a bad temper. His father gave him a bag of nails and told him, excuse me, that every time he lost his temper, he must hammer a nail into the back of the fence. The first day, the boy had driven 37 nails into the fence, the first day. Over the next few weeks, as he learned to control his anger, the number of nails hammered, good morning, Aaron, the number of nails hammered daily gradually dwindled down. He discovered it was easier to hold his temper than to drive those nails into the fence. So finally the day came when the boy didn't lose his temper at all. He told his father about it and the father suggested that the boy now pull out one nail for each day that he was able to hold his temper. 
The days passed and the young boy finally was able to tell his father that all the nails were gone. The father took his son by the hand and led him to the fence. He said, you done well, my son, but look at the holes in the fence. The fence will never be the same. When you say things in anger, they leave a scar just like this one. You can put a knife in a man and draw it out. It wouldn't matter how many times you say you are sorry. The wound is still there. And a verbal wound is just as bad as a physical one. Mm, Jesus. This morning, beloved, I wanted to come from the subject and the title, Scars and Wounds. I was thinking of like, okay, maybe I should say something like, where are your scars or how are you dealing with them? But then I said, no. I felt the Spirit say, just keep it at scars and wounds. Amen. We always talk about the healing and we always talk about, you know, getting over the hump or getting through what we have been through. But sometimes we forget the residue or the scar or the wound that it has left that reminds us sometimes what we've been through. Amen. So I, I wanted to bring that together this morning from the story that I read called The Nails in the Fence about our scars and our wounds. Amen. So we saw in the beginning, you have a father and a son, amen. We have a, a family duo and you have a teaching moment where the father is trying to explain to the son how to control his anger, amen. We all been there. I don't know about you, you don't gotta hit a like button, it's all right, amen, maybe it's just me. But we've all been angry at some point or we've all been through a season maybe where we just continue to be angry. We don't know what's going on. We can't even explain. People talking about, why do you always act like this? We, we, we just can't explain it, but for some reason we've been angry. So when we are angry, we try to find a way to do something to release that anger. So that's why we yell, we scream, hit something or whatever. Sometimes it's not good, amen? The outcome is not always good, but it happens. So here, because this was a little boy and a father, he's trying to show him, hey, I need you to do something with this anger because it's not good for you to always have such such uh, uh, anger and anxiety maybe, and then you can't release it, amen? So he says, go put a nail in the fence. Mm. He said, every time you feel angry, just go hammer a nail in the fence. Now, for some of you, you might think it's easy. Like, oh, I just go put a nail in the fence. No, no, no. It ain't that easy. Amen. Good morning, Trenise. Well, you have a fence and a nail. Have you ever had like a nail? You know, even if you're screwing something in, you know, a nail, it can be thick. It can be long. But to put it through something of like wood, for it to get through the surface and to actually stick, you got to put some pressure in it. You can't just sit there and be all cute with it like, mm-mm. No, no, no. I know my men on here know what I'm talking about. You got to really put, you know, your, your your effort into it, your ump into it to actually get that nail in the fence. So in my imagination, again, I want you to imagine the little boy going to a fence. I'm thinking of a white fence just because I like white. I, and he's sitting there trying to put a nail, one nail, every time he's angry. It says in the story, he put 37 nails on the first day. So that means he was not done with his anger. It wasn't like one day I'm angry for 10 minutes and here's one nail. That sucker went in for 37 times in one day. So just imagine how much he must have been harvesting or building up. Good morning, Wayne Boo. You know, whatever might be going on, you just never know. So in the story, it's showing us how the father said, I need you to find a way to release this anger. So use this nails and this hammer and this fence and go out every day. So the boy kept going out, right? And he kept putting the nails in the fence. And then eventually, it, it started to go away. I want to point out how there was a father and son. And, and how that relationship can kind of correlate with us. And how God is with us. We are God's children. Amen. And, and I don't know about you, but God is my father. I, I'm sure, amen, everyone can agree. Or you can put a like on that. Amen. Hit the like button. But God is your father. So... In this correlation of the story, as we're going through life seasons, there are things that God has taught us along the way. Can you can you be a witness to that? There are things that God has placed in your spirit or things that God has brought people to, you know, help teach you or mentor you in, in such a way in order for you to do better in life. Think about it. Every time you learn something or you're taught something, it's for a good. It's not usually for the bad, normally. Amen. I, again, no judgment. Amen. We've all been through our um, backgrounds and past. Tweet, tweet. 
but I'm saying for in the good way, there's something that God tries to teach us along the way, even as we go through life and season. And sometimes the good and the easy, and, and they're, they feel good, but some are hard and painful. Amen. Good morning, Yasmin. Some, some are not always feeling so good. So sometimes it's so painful in a manner for which we did not want to do it. Have you ever been, come on, don't act all holy on me now, been through something that God says, I need you to do this, or I'm trying to teach you this patience, or I'm trying to teach you humility, or I'm trying to get you to control yourself. And sometimes we just don't want to do it. Amen. We just, we just don't tweet, tweet, keep it real. And, and at times we decide to allow what we want to overpower what God needed from us. Come on. Amen. Come on, beloved. Let's keep it real this morning. It's so painful or we get so much into our own feelings that God is saying, hey, I'm trying to show you this way or I need you to do this. And, and we try to say, no, I'm good. I, I don't want to do that, God. Amen. Tweet, tweet. We keep it real this morning. But so in the story, the boy was obedient to his father. Imagine if he got angry and didn't listen to his father, which some of our kids do. Tweet, tweet. Amen. I'm a parent. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, Chance. We, we, <laughs> we all parents. Our kids, you be like, don't do this, especially the toddlers. No. No is a favorite word. Amen. So imagine if the boy said, you know what, Dad? That's nice and all, but I'm real angry. I'm not going to go put no nail, no fence. I ain't doing it. He didn't do all that. In the story, the boy was obedient to his father, and he put the nails in the fence whenever he got angry. He knew, I am not can't go to my dad. I'm not going to hit somebody. I'm not going to go off nobody. I'm just going to do this task as my dad said. But after a while, because the boy was physically tired of putting a single nail in the fence, he decided to learn how to control his anger. Imagine Beloved, when you are not obedient to God, mm, Jesus, and, and you do not do or either try to attempt the steps that God has trying to show you or trying to give you, and, and then it does not work out. You sit here wondering why you start being tired or you're wondering, you know, why, why is it not working out the way? Because you were not being obedient in the season. Mm, Jesus, come on, beloved. We got to be real with ourselves. I know sometimes it seems outrageous or I know the anger can boil up, but God is also showing in the story that we need to be obedient to the father. We cannot seek after God and ask him to supply or ask him to give us this. And we cannot even listen to the father in the good and the bad. Amen. The boy said, you know what? This is enough. I know I'm angry, but if I got to go out there one more time <laughs> and put this nail on this fence, you know what? I'm good, Dad. You you know what? I understand. I'm going to go ahead and chill. I'm not going to do this no more. So how many of you, beloved, this morning, I'm wondering, are tired? You know, I'm not talking about a sleepy tired because I know it's early. Amen? Sweet, sweet. But I, I mean the mental and emotionally drained. How many of you are, are drained from things that you cannot control? Come on, beloved. Let's keep it real. The anger that came in the little boy was uncontrollable. Clearly, something was triggering him or clearly something was uprising and he couldn't control the anger. But he knew that there was a way to release it in a positive manner so that way he can figure out how he can control it. But how many of us are mentally and emotionally just tired from things that we cannot control? Because if you were beloved, then you would have to let it go. You you have to remember this. If I'm tired and I'm mentally and emotionally drained, that means what do I need to look in the mirror to figure out, okay, God, what do I need to do different? What maybe should I let go of? What things should I put to you for real? Lay it at the throne for real. We listen to the song, A Secret Place. God has a secret place just for you. When it's a conversation between you and God, maybe there's some things he said, I need you to lay this down. But we get in our own way. We want to control the whole thing. Come on. Sometimes we have to be able to surrender it all to God. Hey, come on, I see today. Come on, beloved. But for some folks, you continue to keep stumbling. We're going to talk about this morning. Amen. Because I'm a witness. I ain't, I ain't no bougie or better than y'all. I promise y'all. I'm with y'all. We continue to keep stumbling. We keep backsliding. Come on. We keep choosing to go to the fence. Mm, Jesus. 
Look in the story. The boy knew that he could stop going to the fence when he knew he can control his anger. How many of you are still trying to be in control of the situation or the things that you're going through that you keep going back to the fence? Are you not tired of going to a fence to physically have to put a nail in the fence? Come on, beloved. I want you to imagine maybe how many nails might be in your fence. Come on, beloved. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many nails would be in your fence if you had to do this in the real world? I mean, how many times would you have to hammer a nail in there? Remember, I told you ain't no little cute thing like, here go a little nail, just go do do. No, I mean, you got to put some effort into it, some force. And if you keep trying to control every situation, imagine how many nails are that you're putting in there. I'm going to control how I'm going to do this. Boop. I'm controlling this over here. Boop. I mean, how many times do you have to keep going to the fence instead of just letting go and letting God to be in control? Come on, beloved. Amen. Yes, I know that's right, Aaron. Surrender requires faith. That is always difficult. Amen. Surrender means relinquishing the control. Amen. Come on. Sometimes, beloved, if you have not noticed as we're in the pandemic, we cannot control nothing. Amen. Things might be opening up in phases. But we still can't control the arenas to open up. We can't control the football to come back. We can't control basketball or baseball. There's no entertainment. There's no sit there, I, I want to go relax and go on vacation and go away. You, you, you can't do it all. If you have not seen that in this season, beloved, I'm praying for you. Amen. I, but I promise you, you, you can't control a pandemic. You can't control a virus. You can't control a movement. Things are happening if you believe it or not. Amen. So in this season, beloved, Beloved, I'm wondering, what are you trying to control that you need to just let go of and let God do it? Now, back to the story. You see, the little boy finally learns to control his anger. So he tells his father, like, I'm so very, I'm sure he was like very proud. Like, look, y'all, I got it together. I control my anger. So he thought he was done. Like, I'm done. I'm going to go tell my father and I'm done. But the father said, now you must remove each one of the nails each day. Think about it. He didn't put 37 only in one day, y'all. So imagine how many days or maybe months it took for him to control his anger. So now his father's like, you got to go back out there and take out one nail for each day. He looked, probably looked at him like, what? Again, he didn't say no. He just said, okay, dad. Like, dang, you know, I thought I was done. That's how we be with God. Like, we got to go back for real, God? Like, I'm not done. Like, you didn't finish what you was doing. Uh, really? Mm, Jesus, he had to go back to the place that he no longer needed. Come on, beloved. In order to remove what he had placed in it, he had to go back to a place where he said, I'm done. I can control my anger. I'm good. To remove something that he no longer needed. Good morning, Drew. Amen. So some of you have been placing nails in your fence. Remember, we got our own fence. Amen. We're going to keep our imagination going this morning. And we have been placing nails in our own fence. Some of you have a fence, so you've been placing nails in your home, or you've been placing nails in your job, or maybe you've been placing nails because of your relationship. Come on, beloved. Or you've been placing nails because of your ministry. Good morning, BB. Amen. But God has been telling you to go back to remove the nail. Come on, Jesus. He said, go back to remove the nail. You place those nails in those situations because you were trying to control what was going on. But God is saying, I need you to go back to remove the nail. Go back to where they hurt you. Go back to the place that you had lost someone. Go back to the areas of your life that you were not able to control, beloved, on this morning. Oh, Jesus. I need somebody to type, go back. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus, we so quick to move forward or we're so quick to get past it or we're so quick to try to act like we can't feel it or, or it's not happening. But God says, I need you to go back. Hey, come on, I see today. He needs you to go back where the hurt was, where the nails that you have placed in your own fence. You need to go back. I know that's right, Drew. You need to go back and take out the nail and not just take them all out at once. But God says, go back day by day. That means he needs you to go into him and seek after his face each and every day. It's not just a, a go back and I got everything and I'm going forward. No, God said it's a process. I need you to go back 
each day. And every day you go back, you have to give God praise and say, hey, this thing took me out maybe when I placed the nail, but it's not going to take me out anymore because now it's time to remove it. Hey, come on, I see today. Come on, Jesus. It's time to remove whatever you thought that was going to hinder you. It's time to remove those thoughts and those anxieties. It's time to remove that anger. It's time to remove that depression. Come on, beloved. I don't care what it looks like. And I don't care what folks is telling you. It might not open up again, or we might not get back to this. It does not matter if you do not have God in this season. You got to go back and face it. Come on, yes, and I know that's right. Go back and face that thing that you either thought you could control or that thing that you had to go through. Amen. Hallelujah. It took the little boy, I'm sure, about 37 days. That's just the first day, remember? So I'm just imagining 37 days to each nail out one day at a time. And once he was finished, he saw the fence had holes in it. So he took the nails out because his father said, hey, now you got to go take them suckers out. I'm pretty sure his father was like, you messed up my fence. We need, <laughs> need this fence. Go take them nails out. So he took each one out each day. And now there were holes all in the fence. Imagine, beloved, as you see the fence is supposed to be covered, you know, so that way you can just see a background. You don't want to see through the fence, right? You, you, you're not usually seeing a fence with holes in it. But for some reason... You know, because of the boy had to put the nails in it, there are probably millions of holes all over this fence. And, and there was no longer you, to see a fence. You had to look through it. You could see what was going through the fence now. It wasn't like the fence was protecting the backyard or it was protecting how it was supposed to. But now you can see through the fence. So the father said this. I'm going to read it again on the story. The father said, you've done well, my son, but look at the holes in the fence. The fence will never be the same. When you say things in anger, come on, beloved, they leave a scar just like this one. You can put a knife in a man and draw it out. It won't matter how many times you say that you are sorry, the wound is still there, and a verbal wound is just as bad as a physical one. Come on, beloved. Some of us are carrying around our scars and our wounds. Amen. We Again, we're going to go there this morning, beloved, for things that we have put nails in ourselves. Remember, some of it has been our own nails that we've been putting in our own fence. And for some things or folks, you have put nails in us. Some people also have put nails in us. Amen. You know, they talked about you on your job. You know that you lost your job. You don't know what's going on. You know that relationship or that breakup. Come on. I don't care. If it was a breakup or you might have lost a job or even maybe losing a loved one away, sometimes that's a nail that goes right into your fence and it does not feel good on the inside. But when you remove and go back to that thing, there's a scar and there's a wound there. The hurt is still the same. The wounds are still there. So then it comes to the question as I was getting prepared in the sermon, I said, well, then God, what do we do? What do we do when we have the scars and the wounds that are reminding us what's back there? What do we do when we have to go back and, and go back through or maybe go back and get what we went through or remind us? You know, life just happens sometimes. We cannot control that. A pandemic happened. We did not see it. We probably had plans to graduate this year. Folks had plans to take trips. People got birthdays coming up, milestones, anniversaries. We, you know, we always have life usually planned in advance, but it, it, we couldn't control what happened in this season or, or we could not control how folks treat us. We can only control how we react to them, but sometimes it hurts. You know, they come at us with their words or they come at us even sometimes physically and that thing don't feel good. Good morning, Cliff. And we don't know what to do. So we ask God what to do with the scars. Jesus, what do we do? Is there healing for the wounds. People always said I'm healed or people keep saying I've been changed. And you probably look at them like, that's nice for you. Bless you in your ministry, but I'm still hurting. Or there's still some scars on this side. Or I got a wound over here that, that still might be feeling like it's bleeding or it does not feel good. So I, I wondered it, as I was preparing the sermon, you know, well, what will we do with the scars and the wounds? And, and, and I found this scripture in Isaiah 53. Amen. I'm going to read Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 6. And I want you to really hear the word of God as he is speaking in here. Isaiah 
53 verses 3 through 6. What do we do with the scars and the wounds? Is there healing? For what we have been going through, is there healing as we are attempting to go back? To remove the nail. Is there healing that God has for us? Is there restoration? Are we going to come up out of this? Am I going to be able to get over this? Am I going to be able to smile again? Am I going to be able to feel joy? Is there happiness? God says in Isaiah 53, 3 and 6. He said he was despised and rejected by others. We talking about Jesus here. Come on. A man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he was born of our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded, come on, in verse 5, for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed at Jesus. All we like sheep have gone astray. We all have turned from our own way. And the Lord has laid him the iniquity of us all. Woo, Jesus, come on. Jesus has the wounds and the scars for he died on the cross for you and for me. Even though he died and he had the wounds and the scars, beloved, he had to remind us what we have been through. That's why we have the scars and that's why we have the wounds. It don't look good at times and it might not seem pretty to you. You said, oh, I want to cover this up with some makeup or you try to cover it up and put a mask on it. It may be a spiritual mask or a physical mask. Come on, beloved. But God says you need to have the wounds and the scars to remind you and to show you what you have been through. These wounds and these scars, the holes that were in the fence as the little boy took the nails out was to remind him that even though he got over his anger, there are still scars in wounds that are left, even though we've been through the hurt of losing a job or even though the relationship or the breakup tried to take us out, there is still scars and wounds and hurt. But it's just to remind us what we've been through. It's to remind us how strong that we are. Come on, that you are a survivor. Come on, Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross. And then he was not just nailed to the cross. He was also put in the grave. But he rose, come on, beloved, on the third day with all power in his hands. Even when he came back to the disciples and they did not believe that it was him. One of them said, I must see his hands to see if the nail print is still there. He needed to see the scar to know that that was his savior. He needed to see the scar to know that was his friend. Those scars, beloved, just like Jesus has scars, is to remind us that God died for us for our sins and we are God's children and we are striving to be Christ-like then we can we can and we will rise above this season we will rise trust me beloved you think you can't get through I know we talked about how you tired I know you talked about that you are fed up we talked about how you want to be in control but God is saying listen there was something that happened back in 2018 that I got you out of. Or there was something that you went through childhood and that you overcome. You were strong and a survivor when I made you in your mother's womb. So why do you think that I need to cover up those scars and those wounds? The healing came when you survived it. The healing came when you got over it. The healing came when it became, you made a better person. You became a better man or a better woman of God in God's eyes. People didn't look at you the same. They said, ooh, something different about you, or, or, or you, you seem like you have some more joy, or, or, or you have more peace. That was the healing in itself. When you went through the, the situation, or when you kept putting the nails in the fence, God says, I know it hurts, and I know you're out there trying to control the situation, but I promise you, I'm healing you even in the midst of this situation. Even in the midst of losing the loved one, there's still healing coming to you as you're grieving and your heart is aching. God says, I'm still bringing you the healing. This is the season, beloved, that we will rise above our hurts and our pains and our disappointments. All we must do is to stay in relationship with God. The same way the son listened to the father 
in the story is the same way that you and I have to listen to God. Even when we don't want to, or even when it does not feel good, you have to listen to God in everything that you do. You must listen to God, maintain that relationship. Remember, the boy had to go back each day to pull out one nail a day. That's how God, you need to go back and face God and say, this is what I'm dealing with, or this is what does not feel good to me, God, or this is why I don't. I feel so heavy in my heart or heavy in my mind, and I need you to help me. It's a process. You got to deal with that process each and every day. Go back to where the fence is. Go back to where the nails are and start to pull them out and be okay with those scars and those wounds because it's showing you that you survived. It's showing you that you made it and that you're saying, God, I know I need you to get through this. You have to allow God to flow in your life in every area. The boy went to the fence, excuse me, whenever he was angry. He didn't go to the fence when he had anxiety. Good morning, William. He didn't go to the fence when he had depression, but there's still probably some areas that he needed God to be in, and he probably had to figure out how to deal with them. You cannot just say, God, I want you to deal with this area of my job, maybe, and, and be there on that side, but this relationship, no, I don't need you. Mm -mm, that's not how Jesus worked. Come on, beloved. If you want true relationship with God, you got to let him to be in control of everything that you're going through in every area of your life because God is going to be there. God is the one who can give you the growth and the joy and he can give you the healing, everything you need. Listen, beloved, I came to tell you on this morning that God, your father, is trying to show you the way in this season. We are all in this together. We are not, it's not that some are in a pandemic and some are not in a pandemic, or it's not that some, you know, might get the virus and, you know, some might not. No, we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next hour holds. We don't know what the government going to say. We don't know what the countries are going to do. Beloved, excuse me, we don't know what's going on, amen? All we need to know that we have to trust in God. We got to trust God's process. We got to find a way to listen to our father. We got to find a way to be obedient in the season. We got to find a way to control what God is trying to give us, but not in our own manner, but in God's manner. Find a way to release what's going on in this season, beloved. There has been things that you haven't been able to control, which we all know. There have been things or, or maybe folks or, or, or emotions that you have allowed to overtake you in the season, and which has been making you to be short with folks, or it's been making you to be someone new, and people don't even know who you are. They're like, why are you not answering the phone no more? Or why aren't you, you know, texting me back? Or why, why aren't you coming, you know, to check on me? Or, or what's wrong with you? You know, people are probably sitting there wondering, like, are you okay? Some of you might be tired of hearing that. Are you okay? Maybe because they see something or they're feeling a vibe or energy that's not there. You got to really deal with that thing. Some of you might not even want to get out of bed on some days. You might be like, I, I can't even get out of bed. Or some of you might be shutting out the ones who love you and care about you. You've been praying about someone to check on you. Or maybe you've been praying that you need God and God is sending you those messages or he's sending you those folks and you're not even seeing the blessing of what he's sending you because you're too busy caught up in your own emotions. You have to let go of that this morning on beloved. Let it go. You just have to let go and let God do not be like the boy and just continue to keep putting nails in the fence. Eventually the fence is going to be full with nails and you're going to run out of room. Mm, Jesus, when you run out of room, beloved, that's what I'm talking about this morning. When you ran out of room and you so tired and you feel so drained, God is said, do not just let me comfort you. Allow me to be there with you. The scars and the wounds are to remind us, beloved, that we can overcome. If Jesus had wounds and scars as the nails that were put in his hands, the nails that were pierced in his crown, the nails that were pierced in his side and his feet, then we can also carry our scars and our wounds to remind us that we shall be conquerors. We shall survive. The little boy was obedient to the father. In this season, beloved, I don't know who might need to hear this word or who might be going through. Be obedient to the Father in this season. There have been dreams 
and things of nuggets of wisdom, maybe even numbers or colors or, or, or objects that God has been trying to show you, trying to get your attention. Journal it, write it down and pray about it. Listen to the message that God is trying to give you. He comes to us in all shapes, forms and sizes. And in this season, I believe that he's still with us. I know it's hard. I know it don't feel good. I know some people have lost jobs. I know loved ones like myself are losing them left and right and it's hurting and it does not seem fair. And you're asking God, why now or, or why me? God is saying, why not you? And why not now? I, I know that you have it in you to survive. I know there's more and greatness in you to prosper, but I need you to go back to start taking the nails out the fence. Remember, in this season, you cannot move forward if you did not deal with what was going on behind you. You cannot move forward if you didn't take the time to not just pull the nail out, but also accept the healing that God has for you to remind you of the wounds and the scars that you've been through. You cannot move forward if you haven't dealt with the real person of who you are. You can't be vulnerable with everyone else and not vulnerable with God. Come on, beloved. That's not how it works. You can't hide and put the mask on, the physical or spiritual mask, or like my, my sister said, Alvernia, the spiritual goggles, and you try to hide behind everything. And God is saying, I can't even find you. I can't even get to you. God is saying, I'm trying to speak to your spirit. I'm trying to nurture you, my child. I love you. I want more for you, but I need you to go through this process. I know it does not feel good. I can only imagine having to be that little boy putting a nail in the fence every time you're angry. Because even when you are angry, you're, you know, you're, you're, your balance is off or you, you, you get so angry, you just want to hurry up and push something. But he had to take the time to slowly put at each nail into that fence. And it wasn't like it was easy. He might even stub a, a, a thumb or he might have stubbed a foot or something. But he was angry enough to put 37 nails in the fence on the first day. Come on, beloved. We, we, we got to do better. We have to not just do better for ourselves, but for those who are looking up to us or those who we have to live for or, or those of the generation that's coming after us. Beloved, I, I'm encouraging you on this morning to go back to the fence. Go back and pull out those nails. I'm encouraging you this morning to listen to the Father. Take the time to sit with Jesus. Come on. Take the time to hear his still small voice. Go out in nature and not put the headphones on or don't just go out to get in the exercise, but take time to really listen. Look at the birds and look at nature to say, God, what are you trying to say to me in this season? Or take the time to cry. If you need, if that's you and you're emotional, then just release it, honey. Let it out, let it out, cry, snot nose, do whatever you gotta do. Because at the end of the day, you can't hold it all in. Healing does not come when you act like it does not exist. You have to first acknowledge the hurt or first acknowledge the pain that is come to you either by yourself, either by life or someone else. And then you can be able to allow God to heal what's going on on the inside. Beloved, I hope that encourage you on this morning, hallelujah, Jesus, to go back. Go back to that thing that hurts you. Go back to the thing that you thought you could control. Go back to that relationship that might have took you out in 2005. Go back, Jesus said, I need you to go back and take the nail out. Even though they hurt you and they persecuted you and they pierced you in your side or they pierced you in your heart or they pierced you in your mind. God said, I know you didn't feel good or I know it took you out and it took you to a dark place. But God says the light is gonna be able to come through your fence. As soon as you take that nail out, remember the fence became like see-through. And when I think about a fence and I think about you put it up so you can block the light. But if you put nails in the fence and you take them out, that means you're making room for the light to come through. God says, I need to be able to come through your scars. I need to be able to come through those wounds. I need the light to be able to shine. But beloved, you have to remove the nail first. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm praying, good morning, trees. I'm praying in this morning, Jesus, I'm praying in this season for you that you go back to take the nails out. Let God be the light in your scar and your wound. Stop thinking about it as it looks ugly or stop thinking about it, it, it shouldn't be there, but think about it as, you know what, I survived. Think about it as, 
The more scars and wounds I got, that means the more of a soldier that I am. The more that God says that I can go through, the more that God says, I know she got this, or I know he can make it. I know his faith seems a little down, or I know he, he's starting to question or forget who I am. But God's saying, no, 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 don't do that in this season. Go back to the fence if you need a reminder. There's holes there for a reason. You have scars and wounds for a reason for God to remind you who he is and how he not just healed you, but he also brought you through. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Father. At this time, I open up for any prayer requests or anything that you might need prayer for in this season. You may open it up or you can comment at the bottom. Amen. I pray that this blessed you this morning like it blessed me on this morning to remind me to go back. How come I not see today? Hey, Jesus, go back to remove the nails and also to go back to remember the scars and wounds that I have or my battle wounds or my battle scars. It means that I am a conqueror. It means that I'm a survivor. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is working it out, not just for you, but for me, but for all our good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. BB said, dealing with racism at work is not easy. Amen. Tweet, tweet. We as the black folks and a culture, we have all been there. But sometimes we still have to go back to ask God, give me the strength to get through the racism or give me the strength to be able to not get so angry and upset at the ignorance of folks of how they want to treat me but help me to pray for them help me to be covered with your anointing hey jesus sometimes you gotta pray over yourself amen and cover yourself before you even walk in the door before you even make the phone call to the co-worker come on jesus you gotta be able to cover yourself and say god i need you to get through this because i know it's not time for me to move out of this job but i also need you amen hallelujah jesus Praying for the Strickland family, amen, Joe, and my younger sister, Karen, amen. We're praying for healing for them. We're praying for comfort and peace for them, amen. I got some families I'm praying for as well who have lost loved ones, not just in this season, but recently, and I'm praying for their comfort and their, their manifestation and for God just to be there. I don't know how God going to fix it, but I just know that God needs to be around them, amen. Woo. Also praying for restoration of health, BB says. Dealing with the heel spurs in my feet, amen. Girl, I know, them feet ain't no joke, amen. Sweet, sweet. I got the same thing, BB. We gonna pray, amen, for our whole healing, amen. Uh, Christina Garner, good morning, Christina. She said, I'm encouraged and strengthened. Thank you for letting God use you, amen. Thank you, Christina. Amen. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, BB. You're welcome. This is my pleasure. Amen. We're going to touch and agree on this morning. Amen. Because the devil is a liar. Amen. And I tell people that the powerful weapon that I use when I can't control the situation or, or, or when I don't know what to do is prayer. Well, you can get into your secret place at Kanana CTA and get in that secret closet and you start praying and you have someone agreeing and touching with you. Woo, Jesus, just imagine what the shift is going to happen. Imagine how God will turn that thing around. Hey, come on, I see today. It's going to blow your mind. I promise you, if you don't believe me, try it for yourself. Amen. God is not just hiding you in his secret place, but he's also giving you restoration. When you go into the secret place with God and you go into that prayer language or that, that meditation time with God, that is the restoration. That is the healing. That is the rejuvenation. That, that is what God is doing. He's, he, he's taking the nails out sometimes for you when you can't do it yourself you know how you feel so weak in your body you know that you're so stricken with grief or or you're so emotional god says you know what it's okay my daughter or it's okay my son i'm gonna take that nail out for you hey come on i see today hallelujah jesus hallelujah jesus sometimes god said i'm gonna take the nail out for you because i know that you are a conqueror or i know that you're a survivor i want you to imagine if that's you on this one that god is taking the nails out for you even when you didn't feel like it should come out god says uh-uh it's time to go through this it's time to overcome this i did not get you or put you in this situation to make you fall but i put it in your soul situation to shake up your ground in order for you to get new ground in order for you to have newness to walk on in order for you to have new growth hallelujah jesus amen hallelujah yasmin says thank you you're welcome for the awesome word and she's seeking prayer to walk in her purpose fully amen how can i not see today he come out of the house today 
Come on, prayer warriors. We're going to pray on this morning. I'm praying for those who are streaming now and those who are going to watch later. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. And we give you praise. We thank you, Father, for the word that has come forth, Father. We thank you for reminding us about the nails. Reminding us, Father, to go back, to take the nails out. To reminding us that we need to be obedient to you, Father. Reminding us that we are not always in control, but you are in control. So we ask right now, in the name of Jesus, for the prayer requests that have been forwarded on the screen. For those who are even laid in the heart, those who need bodies to be healed. I'm praying that you cover them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. I'm asking for the oil to flow from the inside out like never before. Give them healing in their bodies and their minds and their spirits, Father. I'm asking for the healing to come. I'm asking Father, for you to give them restoration in their souls for they have aches and they have pains or, or some might be dealing with some type of illness or element. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that the blood still works, that you reach them wherever they might be in the living room or in their jobs or even in their bedroom. Father, I'm asking that you give them relationship. Those who are desiring to know you more than never before. Those who need to see you through new eyes. Those who need the spiritual ears to hear you your voice, those who need the mouth to be able to give you praise and honor. I'm praying Father, that you increase their relationship with you. I'm praying for those families who were spoken, who might be suffering or those who might need comfort or those who might be in the hospital beds and don't know how they're going to get out. I'm praying father for their healing right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for those who are emotionally and mentally tired. I'm praying for those who are trying to see and stay in their dark places, but need to have some light to shine on them. I'm praying, Father, that you be able to remind them and touch them on their shoulder or, or give them a helping hand to say they can come up out of this. This too shall pass. The darkness shall not overcome, but the light shall come in the morning, Father. I'm praying against the depression. I'm praying against the suicidal thoughts. I'm praying against the loneliness that folks are feeling in this season. I'm praying against the isolation that folks are scared to even walk outside of their door. Father, I'm asking that you give them a holy boldness, that you be able to help them overcome their anxiety or overcome their OCD or overcome their anxiousness to know that they shall walk in victory. Father, help us to be followers of you. Help us to be soldiers of Christ. Father, help us to wear our scars and our wounds proudly to remind us that we are survivors, that we shall get through this. This season shall not take us out, but it shall be added to the testimony of all the trials and tribulations that we have been through, Father. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you help us to not be in control, but you help us to let go. Give us the ability to surrender all to you. Help us to surrender our lives. Help us to surrender our hearts. Help us to surrender our jobs. We're praying, Father, for even those who are going through this systematic injustice, those who are, are experiencing the racism. We're praying, Father, that you cover them with the mantle and the blood, Father. We know that we can, cannot control others, but we can control our reaction to what they do to us. We can be able to control and keep us safe with having your, your mantle around us. So I'm praying, Father, that you keep us, even as we go back to our jobs, maybe two days or three days, keep us as we're deciding what to do with our children, if they should be safe or not. Keep us as we're deciding what to do with the nation, if if things should shut back down or, or open back up, Father, give us the wisdom and the guidance, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones and that we are connected to. Help us to lean on each other. Father, help us to pray for one another. Help us to be able to survive in this season, Father. We know the scars and the wounds are there. We know that they sometimes don't feel good, Father, but we know that you are still going to be our light. Please be the light to shine through us each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's all right to give God praise. It's all right to praise him, even in the midst of the tears that might be falling down your face, even in the midst of you can feel the spirit is moving. He is there. Embrace God wherever you might be. I feel the spirit to be there. I feel the spirit is in the place. How can I not see today? Let God do what he needs to do, beloved. I know you've been trying to fight it. 
I know you've been trying to be strong. I know you've been saying it ain't bothering me or I'm going to be okay. But God says, I see your heart. How come I not see today? He sees your heart more than you see it yourself. And God says, I'm here to be able to give you comfort and rest. Rest in my spirit, O ye Jacob. Rest in my bosom, O you Israel. God saying, rest on me. Stop trying to make a way out of no way and let God make the way out of no way. And sometimes you might not get the answer that you desire, but God says, I'm giving you what you need in this season. It might not be what you desire, but God saying, it's what you need in this season. Beloved, I pray that blessed you on this morning. I pray that it touched you on the inside. I pray for every infirmity, every sickness, every limb, everything that is going through in your body. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for the healing to come to the feet, to the arms, to the legs, to the stomach, to the soul, whatever it might be, to the inside of the organs, whatever it is going on. I'm praying for healing and I'm speaking it and believing it in this season because Jesus is worthy and God says he's still a miracle worker. He's still a healer. God is still doing it for our good. Amen. I, I see Joe say he's dealing with the same thing and it's so uncomfortable. The BB, amen. It does not feel good, but God says we shall overcome. The difference between what folks think we are and who we are is that we are children of God. Not just as a culture that we are strong and we have a movement, but we have always been strong from our great, great ancestors. We know how to pray. They was out in them cotton fields praying. They was probably on them slave ships sitting there speaking in tongues because they knew that God would always deliver them. They knew that God will always be there with them. That's the same way for us. We got to remember that God did not just pop up in this season, but God has always been there, even in the midst of our transgressions, even though we can see him or not, God has always been there. The Holy Spirit is always there comforting us. We just got to stay grounded and rooted in Christ and know that can nothing move or shake us but God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Again, I thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for, for uh, just agreeing with me in the spirit. Thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm Elder Paulette Davidson. Amen. And this is my ministry, Harvesting Ministries. I come to you Worthy Wednesdays, which we gave God worthy, excuse me, and praise this morning. And I'll be back with you on Saturday at 8 a.m. for Sanctified Saturdays. Amen. I will, I'm going to post this video on my page. Please share. Please like. Just let someone know if they need to hear this word this morning that the scars and the wounds are okay. It ain't always about covering up. You don't always need a band-aid when it comes to spiritual scars and wounds. But sometimes you need to be able to see it to remind you that you survived. Amen. I, I, I pray that you're blessed on this worthy Wednesday. That you guys have good days. Especially those who have to go back to work or going back in the office. I'm praying that you stay safe. I'm praying that wherever you might be, that God is still going to work it out, not just in this season, but for the future to come, that I'm going to hear your testimonies. I'm going to hear your praise reports. Amen. If you got one, you know, don't feel free to comment those. Feel free to DM me if you need prayer or you need to vent or you want to talk. I'm always here. Please feel free to DM me. Uh, you can uh, check on my YouTube channel as well. I'll post those videos as well. You can share those or you can comment there or you can email me, whatever you might need to do. Let God just use you. Amen. I, I have the hashtag Harvesting Ministries. It's the same on uh, Instagram, Harvesting Ministries, Elder Paula Davidson, my YouTube channel. Elder Paula Davidson, the same thing. Uh, if you feel led by the Spirit to sow a seed into my ministry, I thank you for that and I bless you. My cash app is on there as well. And, and I just want to be able to again to say thank you for that. And I thank you for those who have already been sowing into my ministry because I know God is working it out. Amen. So I bless you. God bless you. Have a great and awesome Wednesday. Amen. It's hump day, y'all. We almost do it. Amen. The weekend almost here. And then we're going to rest some more. Tweet, tweet. Amen. Because ain't much to do because we got to stay safe. Amen. Um, God bless you this morning. And I'll be back with you on Saturday at 8 a.m. Again, thank you for tuning in. May God continue to touch all the prayer requests and those that were spoken, even unspoken. I'm touching and agreeing with you in this season. Amen. Have a great